The next type of isomers we're going to see are called geometric or cis or trans isomers. Now, geometric isomers arise when there's a rigid bond. And you'll remember rigid bonds result from pi bonds, which require p orbitals. So typically, we're going to be looking at a multiple bond between two atoms containing a minimum of one pi bond, where the most common example by far is that of the alkene, or the carbon-carbon double bond. We're going to see a couple different versions of this. The first is the 1,2-disubstituted alkene. Those with substituents on the same side are called cis, and those on the opposite side are called trans. Now, the 1,2-disubstitution nomenclature comes from having one group on one carbon and one group on the other. And when we're talking about the same side, we're talking about cutting the alkene in half horizontally and seeing if groups are on the same or opposite sides. Let's show you what that looks like. So we think about cutting this in half here or here. This structure here on the left, this is called trans, and this one here on the right is called cis. Now it's worth noting that the trans isomer here is considered more stable due to minimized steric repulsion between the two groups. So one do disubstituted alkenes have pretty easy jargon. They're cis or they're trans, depending on whether or not groups are on the same side or opposite sides. But what happens when we have more decorations? For that, we need to introduce another concept of nomenclature. So with tri and tetrasubstituted alkenes, we use a different nomenclature called E and Z. Now, fortunately, this is not all that complicated, and you get to pull from a lot of content that you already know. Now, when we're working through this, there's a series of steps that you follow. The first thing you'll do is cut the alkene in half vertically, and then what you're going to do is to assign high and low priorities on either side of that cut using the con-angled prelog rules. Now, if these rules sound unfamiliar, it's because you're not quite there yet, but you will see this nomenclature in the R and S jargon section, so head there to check out the rules. If there is a high priority group on the same side, the alkene is Z, and if the high priority groups are on opposite sides, the alkene is E. And that's it. All you do is cut it in half, assign the priorities, and then see if you're on the same side or opposite sides. Let's go through some examples here. So here I'll cut this in half, and I'm going to show the hydrogen atom just for completeness sake. Now on the left hand side, bromine takes precedent over fluorine. We have one and two. The methyl takes precedent over the hydrogen. We have one and two. These are on opposite sides, so this is E. We'll go through the next one here. Here we have a CH3 group and a CH3 group. We'll give these priorities one and two one and two. These are on opposite sides again, so this is E. We'll go to the next one here, cut this in half. We have one and we'll show the hydrogen just for completeness' sake. So this here would be one and two. And since we have two methyl groups here, we don't have any particular priority of one over the other. And so this here doesn't get E and Z nomenclature because it doesn't have E and Z nomenclature worth keeping in mind. Let's go to the next set of functional groups. Again, we have a chlorine and a methyl group down here. And when you see the CHO like so, a CHO, this is shorthand for the aldehyde functional group, which looks like this, where I'm going to show this squiggly line as if it's bound to something else, which it's bound to the alkene here. This here would be priority number one because of the multiple bond. This here is number two. This is number one. This is number two. And again, we have an E alkene. Let's continue to work through these. This here would be number one. This is number two. This is number one. This is number two. Great news. This here is Z. We have, again, two hydrogens on the same side. So like our third example above, no EZ isomers here. If we come now to the next structure, what we'll take a look at is this group here would be priority number one, and the hydrogen that's here would be priority number two, but 
this ring is symmetric. We're not able to give priority again. So again, no E and Z jargon. And last but certainly not least, we'll take a look at the next structure here. It's contained within a ring, so it's a little bit tricky to spot, but no problem. This is priority number one up here and number two. This is number one and this is number two. And for that reason, this structure here is E. Now these are good practice and like I said, head to that con angle prelog rules which you're gonna see moving forward and you can use here to assign the priorities. This is stuff that you're gonna get to recycle through all of this jargon, but there's an important take home message from this section. With a dye substituted alkene, we're dealing with cis versus trans nomenclature. Are they on the same side or opposite sides? With more decorated alkenes, you cut it in half and you take a look at either side. Which group has higher priority? And are they on the same side or opposite sides? If they're on the same, there's Z. And if they're on opposites, it's E. And a nice, easy way to remember is E or Z is easy to remember. Just remember Z is like this, so it's cis. 